This is the Striker 12 by Orange Wargame, and it's the first ever Airsoft Striker 12. Or at least, that's partly true, since this is actually meant to be a gel blaster and not a full-fledged airsoft replica. These became a part of reality in late 2020 thanks to Orange Wargame, a Chinese gel ball manufacturer. However, due to a crackdown on everything firearms related, these highly anticipated replicas were quickly seized up by the Chinese government. After only a small number of sales could be made, primarily to surrounding stores and to sites in Australia. Originally from what we could assume, these would have sold for about 200 or 300 US dollars. However, due to the crackdown, these sell for more like 600 dollars before shipping. And at this time of making this overview, less than 10 are supposedly in the United States. With that brief backstory that I can acquire from some Chinese friends and owners, we find ourselves here with this Orange Striker 12 thanks to Ross Radford of XE Airsoft, who will of course be linked in the description down below for letting me mess around with his for this overview. Sadly, I don't have the original drum that it arrived in. And yes, I said drum. Nor is this all stock as it's clearly not tarnished with orange parts here and there. Besides a coat of black paint, an unpowered Armson OEG sits up top that is correct for this replica that's based on the earlier Sentinel Arms models of the resurrected Striker. Ross and his team also hooked this one up with a custom in-house made composite aluminum inner barrel that threads with a steel outer barrel to bulk it up to the right outer diameter for APS shells. The original stock barrel was of a translucent polycarbonate, and since the barrel is held into the receiver, any stress put on the barrel could crack the barrel, especially since the shroud does not support the barrel very much at all. Originally, APS shells wouldn't reach into the inner barrel of the Striker 12, so they would bleed out their power when shot. So the custom barrels serve several purposes for us airsofters, especially since only PPS, Tanaka, and Madbull shells were the only shells that would fit originally, and would only output about 200 feet per second and ultimately sub 20 foot ranges. Surprisingly, despite the nature of its original purpose, this Striker 12 is well made from CNC steel like the barrel shroud and shoulder stock. The rest would be made from aluminum like the receiver, trigger, safety, and outer drum body. Only the grip frame, butt pad, internal cylinder, and ejection rod handle are plastic, leading to a weight of 4.6 pounds unloaded. Apart from that, everything works like you'd assume it would, like the overfolding stock that unfolds like my SPAS 12 stock. The loading and unloading process, however, is where the fun starts. So dropping the trapdoor, we can drop in APS shells into the cutouts in the drum, turning the dial in front of the drum each time we load another one in. If you've ever seen a Striker 12 in a video game or in a movie, then you probably know how this is done. Once it's loaded, then close the trapdoor and have yourself some fun. Just note that with the safety on, the trigger is only blocked from falling, so I like to load the Striker 12 by first putting it on safe, winding the drum up, dropping a shell, pulling the trigger so the drum will click over, load, and repeat. It's much faster this way. Once it's loaded, you can really spam the trigger if fully wound up. You should be getting about 40 or more shots off with the fully wound up drum, but of course, expect only 12 shots before you'll need to pop each shell out with the ramrod ejector. This replica does not eject shells as you shoot them, so expect a long and arduous reload every single time. And that's basically everything anyone should really need to know about this thing. This is one of the very few replicas that can actually make good use of shells as they're self-contained even when fired like a revolver would. FPS readings entirely depend on how you load your shells, and since this has a short barrel, you can't expect the craziest ranges. But for those close quarters engagements, this would be an absolute monster to go against. With surprising recoil from the shells and from the drum spinning over each time the trigger is pulled and a real sound blast from the barrel, 12 shots of rapid fire blasting should put a scare into your enemies. And we're not shooting gel balls anymore. I of course hope that I can get one of these icons myself one day, but I think I'll wait for the prices to go down a bit more like many other people would. But this Striker 12 by Orange is definitely on my list of most wanted replicas for obvious reasons.
But I'd like to thank Ross and the entire XE Airsoft team for letting me mess around with this Striker 12 so I could get some notes and footage of it for you all to enjoy. They're all great guys with a lot of talent behind the builds they put together, like this GHK HBAR AUG or these flamethrowers. A lot more about these builds soon enough. But I would also like to thank our sponsors like Airsoft GI and GNG Armament for their continued support for the US Airsoft channel, especially when we get our own coupon codes exclusive to the Airsoft GI website. So be sure to use it every time you're on that site. I'd also like to thank Augusta Airsoft for making my trip to Virginia possible in the first place so I could get this footage and film the battle for Augusta, which I'll have gameplay on very soon. The US Airsoft channel members also need some love, like Love Anime 809, Aiden Dewell, Tristan, Art and Airsoft, and all these other members who help fund all my projects. It's thanks to them that I can do what I do to entertain you all. Maybe consider joining them with the join button on the US Airsoft channel homepage to get shoutouts, exclusive content, polls to decide what videos I create next, and more. I'd highly appreciate anyone who looks into this. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. That was fun, but that's not what you want to see.